Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. Today's video I want to talk about an accident that I had with the telescope and you know what happened and how it happened and uh, spoiler alert it's all on me so but I am basically out of commission for oh probably a couple more weeks but I do have a plan and things are going to come back together and but in the interim I'm not going to be able to do any astrophotography. I do have a bunch of content ideas lined up. I was going to kind of go over that kind of thing with you here in just a second and talk about the uh, the repairs and things that I'm going to do to put this uh, rig back together. So if you're interested in checking out what happened and what my plan is, then stick around. And I thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Doug, and this is Astro AF. What happened? I was experimenting with a network cable. I had a Cat6 cable running out to the scope and my dogs were playing out back and sprinting across the yard. And uh, I guess one of them, or more than one of them, got snagged in that network cable and pulled it. They didn't bite it. I think they were running through it and they ran through the cable and it got caught on them, uh, on their shoulders or something. And, and it pulled the tripod over and the, uh, the scope went over and it landed like this with the focuser down. So the scope wasn't actually even touching the ground because this was holding it up. The mount had rotated about 10 degrees with the clutches tight. So um, I don't think it hurt anything. And again, I'll, I'll be going through that. The, the MS training camera uh, weren't touching anything. And uh, like I said, uh, this, all tested out good. Uh, you know, I got to go through and make sure everything's aligned right and stuff, but um, I think it should be fine. So anyway, that's what happened. It's on me because I left a loose cable on the ground and, uh, it, you know, so it's nobody's fault but my own. But, you know, that's, it's unfortunate, but it's the way it goes. But uh, some of this didn't get touched at all and it's fine. And some other components here uh, were destroyed. So, the mount, thankfully, seems to be in fine shape. There's not a mark on it, and uh, it powers up. I haven't had a chance to test it, and this will be one of the first things I test when uh, I start putting this all back together. I am gonna take the opportunity to go ahead and adjust the clutches and adjust the axes so that they're moving nice and smoothly. They've been tightening up a little bit, and I want to make sure those are adjusted correctly for balancing. It just makes it easier. And let's see, my image train is all tested out and no problems. And it did not take an impact at all. The uh, telescope tube is untouched and it's fine. Uh, however, the, the focuser assembly got damaged and the uh, shaft, I think it's like the pin-in shaft for the focuser knobs that runs through that uh, assembly, uh, got bent. And the reason it got bent was because the, the electronic focuser took the entire impact and basically protected everything else. So this... This one took one for the team, and it is no longer functioning. The, my power box, my power hub, it is fine, although the, the little mounting bracket, um, the screw got bent, and that might be fixable. This looks a little bit cracked right here, um, but I think it might be able to be tightened back up. What that does is it tightens it up in the mounting bracket so it won't move and it kind of sandwiches it in there. My Raspberry Pi got destroyed and the case for the Raspberry Pi just shattered all over the place. My data is safe on the SD card and uh, that is fine, but the Raspberry Pi itself, the network jack and USB jacks got damaged in the fall 
and my EQ mod cable got destroyed. The end with the uh, chip in it basically blew apart. So I got a new EQ mod cable. So my plans for content coming up, because I'm not going to be um, able to uh, do any astrophotography, maybe not until the beginning of the, of the, of the new year. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but first is to get the focuser assembly back. I sent the focuser over to a friend of mine over in Ohio. His name's Jay. And Jay has a small machine shop. He's a uh, very talented mechanic and body man. And he has that, like I said, a small machine shop. And he loves to work on telescopes. And he, he actually does a lot of buy-sell stuff on telescopes. Anyway, uh, Jay's a, a, a really good friend of mine. And he's like, send it over. And so I sent it to him. And uh, he was able to replace that uh, pinion shaft. And uh, he actually found a replacement one. He was going to try and just straighten it out in his machine shop, but it was a standard shaft. And so he got that replaced. He got everything all lubricated and, uh, and adjusted. And he said the focuser is dialed in. And, uh, you know, just check it out when I get it back. And I should receive that back in about three or four days. I purchased some... Musso paint and here let me show you why I'm planning if you can see on the sides of the tube here how much reflection is coming off of that now while I don't have a problem with light leaks or anything on this scope I thought that you know gosh with that uh, that much reflection off the insides of the tubes um, I wonder if I could improve my contrast and my images if I darken that up. So that Musso paint, I think that's how you say it. I'll have a link for it down in the description. It's like the blackest black paint available other than military grade, which, which you can't buy. So anyway, I, I, and I got some angled brushes that I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint that inside there and just see if it makes a difference. And then, uh, so I'll have a video on doing that and getting the focuser installed again. I'll probably have a video on taking it apart and tuning up my mount. It's not going to be a complete disassembly. It'll, it'll just be a tune-up. I'll be checking for <clears throat> backlash adjustments and, um, and the, uh, the axes adjustments to make sure that everything's uh, working nice and smoothly. I've got this Stella Lyra uh, rotator that I'm going to be installing. Um, I had wanted to install this previously, but there, I had a clearance problem with my, with my field flattener, and I was not able to fit this all the way in. And I actually have a... Uh, I purchased a, um, an, ad uh, an adapter ring here to, uh, uh, to get this connected. But this will not go all the way down on because it hits inside on the inside of the threads here. There's a, a reducer. So I'm going to take this extension tube off of my field flattener and screw this, which is what this adapter ring is for, directly into the field flattener, and which is going to be kind of cool because I'm then going to have a solid connection threaded all the way from the front to the back of the image train, where before this tube slides in uh, to a compression ring. And I never did really like that so much. And I, I could actually see that, uh, you know, even though I get it really tight and everything, that, uh, that there was still the slightest bit of uh, motion in that. If you, um, I never really noticed it as a problem in my imaging, but uh, just the fact that it is able to uh, move uh, a millimeter, um, you know, and, and there's got to be some sag there depending on the position of the telescope. So I think this is going to be a lot better. So I'll go through an installation video. And I'm also going to be modifying this because when this is installed, the zero indicator on here wherever it is, there it is, um, ends up at about the 5 o'clock position. And uh, I contacted, it was FLO, First Light Optics, and they checked out for me. 
And there's some little grub screws in here that can be loosened up, and this can actually be rotated to realign the zero point, so it's at the 12 o'clock position, uh, which I would really like because that will put um, this tightening fixing knob here uh, uh, on the top, I believe, and then I'll get the zero position up here where I can read it, which will make it easier to set it to a zero position for almost all my shots and then uh, rotating for if I'm doing mosaics and things like that or just for uh, whatever framing that I want to do. So I'll probably have a video on that. This is the Astro Asus Oasis Focuser, and I have a, um, a replacement coming. It's going to be about a week and a half before it gets here. And I just want to, I want to say that Astro Asus, you know, not only has been standing behind me, they're carrying me through this, and I am so grateful to them uh, for just the amazing customer service and, and contact and, and helping me through this because, you know, this is a big deal. And uh, because this is not functioning, it won't power on. The gearing that connects to the shaft got bent in the um, in the fall, and maybe I can show you that. See if we can focus. But if you can see how that's bent on that plane there, and that's uh, that gearing is inside a bearing that's in there, and so it's wedged and seized up in the bearing. So this won't even rotate, or it does, but it's really hard. It's no good anymore, and I can't get that out of there because it's it's basically. It got racked, and, uh, and it's wedged itself inside that, uh, that bearing. I'm sure it is scratched in the bearing journal, and it's ruined. So I've got uh, this new part is coming as well. So, gosh, I think that's it. So anyway, there's a bunch of content sitting here for you know, two or three videos. So I don't think I'm going to be short on, on content and getting videos out while I'm putting this all back together. I hope you'll find this stuff interesting as I am getting it back together. And anyway, hopefully we'll learn something along the way. And if I haven't learned anything else, it's that uh, don't take anything for, for granted, you know, loose cables or anything like that laying on the ground, anything that could potentially cause an accident allowing your telescope to fall over. You know, obviously uh, that's not something that I will do again. And uh, and I am thankful it was not worse, you know, something like the mountain going, boy, I, that would be a, a tough one to get back going again. So uh, I'm grateful it wasn't worse than what it is. And, uh, and you know, what I have here, it's bad enough, but it's recoverable. So it's just going to take a little bit of time. So anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and it's a short one. Obviously, I'm really looking forward to getting set back up and getting some astrophotography going again. It has been cloudy since this happened. Every night, it's been horrible. And I have been so happy about that. So anybody else, I'm sorry, you know, in the area, I, I hope that I'm not wishing the clouds on, you know, if it's just over my, my house, that's great. You know, but <laughs> anyway. Um, I haven't missed out on anything yet. I'm sure there's going to be some clear nights in the next couple of weeks, but, um, you know, that is what it is. And we'll just keep moving forward from there. So, everybody, thanks so much. My name's Doug. This is Astro AF. If you like this video, please leave a like, and I would certainly appreciate it. If you subscribe, that would be amazing. So, clear skies, everybody.